Heritage Galleries and Auctioneers presents The Joel Whitburn Archive From the hits and albums of the 40s, the 50s, 60s, 70s, right up to 2005 All the hits and thousands of rarities, the picture sleeves, the billboard library The history of America's music of the 20th century and beyond Imagine a collection of recorded music that includes every song that has appeared on Billboard's pop hit singles chart, currently known as the Hot 100, since 1940. Over 26,000 hits. A collection that includes every album that has appeared on the Billboard Pop Albums chart, known today as the Billboard 200, since 1945. Over 25,000 albums. A collection that includes the greatest, most complete picture sleeve collection in the world. More than 10,000. The most complete library of Billboard magazines. Almost a complete run dating back to 1937, plus other issues dating back to 1902. The music that made the other Billboard charts, R&B, country, adult contemporary, mainstream rock, modern rock, Christmas, dance and disco, the bubbling under charts, and number one pop hits dating back to 1920. Thousands of non-charting hits and albums, many quite rare. Over 125,000 recordings in all and growing every week. The Joel Whitburn Archive. Come on into record research. Just as I imagined. (laughs) Jim, this is the very beginning of my record archive. This is every number one single from beginning in 1920 through 1939. And uh, all the classics that you may or may not remember, things like uh, Paul Whiteman, Alice Blue Gown, uh, Al Jolson, Isham Jones, wow. the old Columbia, the, Vic- the Victrolas, the um, Brunswicks are all here. And uh, so this is the very beginning this is the, the, the early years of the big band era when it was just forming. Duke Ellington, Count Basie, uh, Benny Goodman are all in here. And, uh, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Wow. Come on in, Jim. My little cubicle here, we have about six, 7,000 oh CDs. These are all the greatest hit CDs of Elvis Presley, King Creole, Elvis Golden Records. 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong. And uh, all the greatest hits of all the artists are right here for our research. Now, I want to take you into the vault. Wow. We got a three hour steel door here to protect it. Come on in. This is my pride and joy. This is every single that ever made the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Every single. Every one. Here we have a tray with Del Shannon, Dee Dee Sharp, Shep in the Limelights, Daddy's Home, uh, T.G. Shepard, a great country artist, Bobby Sherman, the Shirelles. I know they're one of your favorite groups. groups. Here we have a a record, uh, Will You Love Me Tomorrow? It was originally released as uh, Just Tomorrow. We have a copy of that. Shirley and Lee, all in near mid condition. All the original releases is when they were popular on the Billboard chart. Just one of those trays is just fabulous, but I'm, how many trays are there? Oh, there's like 250 trays, and uh, all originals as when they were peaking on the Billboard chart. Um, everything from 1955 on is in this area right here. There isn't one song missing. This is the heart and soul of the collection, I believe. Uh, when collectors and people come in here, it almost knocks them out to be able to pull out a tray and to look at these and to see the condition they're in, to see that there's one of everything, that they're all the original labels, the original releases, as when they were originally released. Not one single artist missing? Not Nothing missing. Single missing. If there were singles that were released in the 90s when there were CD singles and they released 45s, we have those also. Um, it's really invaluable because you really cannot ever try to put this together again. There aren't that many old record shops around. Uh, 
they're fading fast and to try to find all the originals in mint condition and to put together the whole history of America's uh, pop rock charts would be almost impossible but it's all right here to me this is invaluable I, I don't think you can you almost can't put a price on it uh, it's just my favorite part of the collection I just love pulling a tray taking it up to my office researching the records, playing the records, looking at the records. And uh, you look up the charts and you realize that every song is here. There isn't one missing. It's amazing. It is. And uh, it's taken a lifetime to put this together, really. I've spent the better part of my life getting them and then, of course, making sure that they are mint condition and, uh, you know, upgrading records as I went along. And now I've got the collection so complete and uh, in, uh, they're all in, like they say, mint condition. And uh, usually a, a, a disc jockey that comes in here, a record collector will come in and I'll pull out a tray. They'll start going through Paul McCartney and looking at these and seeing the condition they're in and saying, I've never seen anything like this. The McCoys, Gene McDaniels, Michael McDonald, Maureen McGovern, Jimmy McGriff, the great jazz artist, all the old McGuire sisters. You pull them out and they're mint. They've never seen anything like it, and they, uh, they're absolutely floored at the condition of this archive. I see a turntable over there. I think I've just got to hear Curtis Lee, Pretty Little Angel Eyes. Oh, yeah. That would, that would be a great one to play. One of my favorite things in my archive, Jim, is my picture sleeve collection. People have said that it's the greatest picture sleeve collection in the world, and there's nothing like it. Here, for instance, is just one volume of Elvis Presley picture sleeves. All Elvis. All Elvis, all originals, even some of the compact 33 singles, which are so valuable. Some of the DJ sleeves that are incredibly uh, valuable. And all of his early ones. All the variations of Love Me Tender, The Hound Dog and Don't Be Cruel, a Blue Suede Shoes promo sleeve. Uh, I keep all of the, the great artists I keep in uh, in these custom-made leather binders. Here is Ricky Nelson, one of my all-time favorite artists. We have every Ricky Nelson, including some of his later ones, which are extremely valuable. Fire Breathing Dragon, uh, you know, these are several hundred dollars for some of these sleeves. But we have all the Ricky Nelsons in all near min condition. You don't see any ring wear like you usually see in, in, the, in most collections. But uh, Johnny Mathis, Madonna, The Letterman, John Lennon, Brenda Lee, Bob Dylan, Billy Joel, on and on. Thousands and thousands of all original sleeves. The Rolling Stones. Over 60 of those folders, looks like. Yeah, yeah. I had them, they were custom made and leather wrapped. Well, this All is of fantastic. Their... Just every one of these volumes is, is, is something in itself. Yes, absolutely. These are extremely rare. I can't get no satisfaction. It's one of the rarest and very sought after by Rolling Stone fans. This is uh, one, one thing that I really pride in myself in, not only collecting every single that made the Hot 100 from 1955 on and having in min, min condition, but to collect every picture sleeve, especially by all the artists, even the stuff that didn't chart in here. For instance, the Ricky Nelsons, a lot of those did not chart, but I have every Ricky Nelson ever charted, all the Bob Dylans, all the Rolling Stones. What a range. Just look at, at this volume. Haley Mills, Sal Minio, yeah. Miracles, Guy Mitchell, Monkeys, Jane Morgan. It's it's just amazing. Yeah, and it, it continues on. And then you, here you've got uh, various artists, artists that had one shot, one Hit Wonders, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, Zorro, Jimmy Charles, Ed Burns, Eddie. Cookie Cookie, <laughs> The Birds, extremely rare sleeve. This is uh, this is probably about a thousand dollars. Mr. Wow. Tambourine Man, it's a it's a promo sleeve that was issued for Mr. Tambourine Man, black and white sleeve, Eddie. probably one thousand to twelve hundred dollars for that sleeve alone. Uh, a lot of great promo sleeves are in here, but I am so proud of this picture sleeve collection. I guess. And it's, it's one of my favorite things that I've collected over the years. 
And uh, sections now. Just yeah, it's all complete A through Z. Then we have all the EP picture sleeves. Here we have about eight or eight to ten thousand more sleeves. Later, later artists from the 70s and 80s, and uh, all in plastic sleeves. A lot of the a lot of the ones in here are just one of a kind. Very very rare. A lot of promo sleeves in here also. So that's it. That's the complete history of the the. The Billboard Hot 100 charts, it's, uh, you know, the rock and roll era. It's all the original singles, and it's all the original picture sleeves. The greatest picture and sleeve. There is no other picture sleeve collection, really, in the world like it. Uh, I've talked to picture sleeve collectors all over the world, and they, they're they dumbfounded. When they see these, they say, I've never seen this before. I can't believe that this exists. But they're all here. Here we have the complete history of Billboard's top 200 album charts. Every album that ever charted is here in near mint condition. Here we have Elvis Presley. Almost, you know, not almost, but everything that he ever charted, like duplicates of, of everything. And it's, any artist you can think of, the Beatles, Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry Great. doing Memphis, his greatest hits, St. Louis to Liverpool, one of his classics. This was a great one, the London Berry Chuck Berry uh, sessions. I had no idea he had this many charted albums. Yeah, he had quite a few. And uh, The Birds, David Bowie, um, Herbie Mann, Manfred Mann, Jerry Lee Lewis, The Killer. The Killer. The killer. We got all of his stuff. I even have an album by Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. Jerry Holy. Lewis, yeah. <laughs> and of course, Jerry Lee Lewis, The Greatest Show on Earth. Look how young he was. Yeah. And then he got into country, you know. We have all all of those too. Uh, Journey, Judas Priest, uh, Don Ho, from Don Ho to Buddy Holly and the Hollies. Uh, any artist you can think of. Everything that ever made the Billboard Marvin chart Gaye. is here. Oh yeah, Marvin Gaye would be. Uh, look at this one. Oh, with Tammy. Terrell. Tammy Terrell. These, you know, these oh, early Motown Tomla albums are extremely hard to find. And look at that one, what Marvin Gaye and his girls, extremely oh, valuable. Those duets were fantastic. Yeah, the Everly Brothers, the Eurythmics. Well, we're not at the end of the alphabet, so I think there's some <laughs> more around here. Oh, you got some. Yeah, we got some neat album covers here, a little variety of Led Zeppelin and Donna Summer. Here we have every album that bubbled under, which got from number 201 to about 220. These are regional hits, similar to our Bubbling Under singles. Right. But Glenn Shirley, Ellen Shirley, Glenn Chirac, who was the lead singer of Little River Band, mm -hmm. Shotgun, a great disco group, and so on. Every album that made the Bubbling Under is complete, 100%. A lot of great collectible items. Here we have all the R&B albums that ever charted. All in mint condition, A to Z, all the R&B albums. Here we have every country album that charted, Liz Anderson. Now some of, some of the ones that charted are in the pop albums that we just looked at. Right, if they made the pop charts, they're over there. If they're just country or R&B, they're here. All the country, all the Jim Reeves which are very rare, the Merle Hagers, and so on and so on. All the box sets that have made the charts, the Elvis Presley, the Metallica, the Grateful Dead, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, this is the end of the everything that made the top 200. All the soundtracks, the original cast, the various artists, TV shows are all here. Uh, here we have more of the, all the great artists, The Who, uh, Stevie Wonder, and uh, here we have a very interesting area. Everything that made the album charts from 1945 to 1955 is in this area. We have the 10 inch albums, Les Brown, Frankie Carl, uh, the Cordettes, Rosemary Clooney and Harry James, the King Cole Trio. We have the little albums that RCA put out, Satchmo, Eddie Arnold, Perry Como, 
TV favorites, so Bing those, Crosby. Those albums are a group of 45s. They're groups of 45s. These are the 78 albums. Frank Sinatra, songs by Sinatra. The voice of Frank Sinatra. Freddie Slacks, Boogie Woogie. Oh, some of the art on these are just... They're just fantastic. Terrific. Yeah, they're just wonderful. Liberace in a frame. Satchmo. Uh, all the soundtracks, all the great MGM movies, are, all the soundtracks are here. Uh, all the Glenn Miller sets with the, uh, the wonderful silver and, and white covers. We got the complete set. So this is everything that made the Billboard charts from their inception up until the rock and roll era started. Right. And this is the continuation of the, everything that made the top 200, the Supremes, the Turtles, Conway Twitty, UFO, Uriah Heep, U2. It just continues on and on and on and on all the way through here. The Rolling Stones, Kenny Rogers, Diana Ross, uh, any album that ever made the charts from number 200 through number one is here. This is this whole section here is a complete history with the Billboard Bubbling Under singles charts. All right, Joel, what exactly is the Bubbling Under again? The Bubbling Under are regional hits, songs that didn't quite make the top 100. They got to position 101 to about 130. And uh, there's a lot of great garage bands in here, uh, records that most people think should have made the top 100 but didn't. Harmonica Fats, Slim Harpo, Brenda Jo Harris, Rolf Harris, Wilbert Harrison, Harvey, the Edwin Hawkins singer, Sam Hawkins. A lot and of no names, but a lot of names that everyone would yeah, recognize it, as well. A lot of very valuable stuff. You know, the early Kinks and the early Pink Floyds are all in here. There's a couple Beatles songs in here. And uh, very hard to find, almost impossible to find a complete collection today. And you've, got, and you've got all of them. Every one of them is complete. Every bubbling on a single. In this area, we have all of the box sets by all of the great artists, great research material, great CD recordings. For instance, here's Eddie Cochran, one of the great 50s rocker. Nice box set of all of his Gosh, recordings. He had that many songs? He had a lot. <laughs> uh, Sammy Davis Jr., the Sammy Davis story, all of his recordings. Uh, Dwayne Eddy, beautiful box set by the Bear family in, in Germany. Uh, Electric Light Orchestra, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, the Everly Brothers, Fats Domino, Buck Owens, a lot of great Elvis box sets, Walk a Mile in My Shoes, The Artist of the Century, um, The Weavers, great folk singers, Conway Twitty, and a lot of various artists down here. But... Uh, these are all specialty recordings. These have not charted, but it's just a great part of my archive. Doo-wop volumes, Bessie Smith. Bessie Smith recordings, Phil Spector, everything that he produced ever is in here. Joe Stafford. Uh, almost anybody that big in the last half century is in here. From 1990 to about 1998, the main configuration for the singles charts was the cassette single. And here we have every cassette single that made the Hot 100, the Bubbling Under, the R&B, the country charts. Here we have artists like uh, the Jars of Clay, uh, Starship, uh, Jewel, Jodeci, uh, all the Elton Johns, all the Billy Joel. And these Lullaby. aren't that easy to... to They're to extremely find. hard to find. Uh, they're very hard to find, and, but the, every one came with a neat little picture box, and we have the complete set of everything that made the, the Hot 100 from 1990 through 1998. This area, and continuing into the other room, is our non-charted archive. These are albums that did not chart, but they're great collections, like here's the Beatles collection. Here's the Beach Boys collection. Here's a great Chuck Berry collection. And there's just some great things in there. Buddy Holly's in here, Eddie Cochran's in here, uh, the Miles Davis, yeah, all the Bing Crosby, various uh, collections of his 30s and 40s. And since these are non-charted, we're gonna find some things that are just, uh, are gonna be new things to. Yeah, there's, it's, it's, you know, 
you don't know what you're going to pull out because uh, anything that was important or chart or did not chart that was by a main artist or, or something interesting we kept and we kept it all in this area so we've got uh, I would think close to what eight nine thousand albums at least that have not charted there's even albums in Elvis yeah Elvis not chart. believe it or not yeah <laughs> people are always shocked to see that but you know there's a lot of Buddy Holly in here uh, and uh, Chuck Berry and you know all of the great rock artists uh, from the 50s there's a lot of stuff in here this is my video archive I've got over 8,000 movies and videos from 1970 on and uh, here's one I was looking for the other day Citizen Kane yeah. to me it was the number one movie in history City of Angels, City of Hope, City of Joy, City of Lost City's. Children, City Slickers, Clan of the Cave Bear, Class, Class Act, Class Action. The Client, this is a great movie, Frank, uh, Stallone, Cliffhanger, Clockers, Close Encounters. I've got several versions of that. Club Paradise, a great comedy. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way to the end. All... Yeah. The complete history of the Billboard video cassette charts. Here we have all the music videos by all the great artists. The Rolling Stones, Sympathy for the Devil, their live VHS, Linda Ronstadt, Diana Ross, Rush, Chardet, The Scorpions, Paul Simon, Skid Row, Slaughter. Jeez, it goes on forever. It goes on forever. And we have all the specialty videos, the sport videos, the aerobics, the, uh, all the DVDs that are popular today. This whole wall is the continuation of the Billboard Top 200 album charts. Uh, of course, in 1990, the CD was the number one configuration. So in the, starting in January 1st of 1990, we collected everything that made the Top 200 on CD. So here's Elvis Costello. Here we have uh, Counting Crows. Uh, Coverdale Page, a couple guys from Deep Purple, the Cowboy Junkies. And then what we do is on the back of each CD, we put down, this one got to position 102 in 1995. Here's Cracker, got to position 63 in 1996. So every album that made the charts, made the top 200 from 1990 to today is in this area. These are really interesting CD singles, Jim. They're promo CDs that were not were never issued as commercial singles by the major labels. They would issue these to radio stations, to the press, promo CD singles. They're extremely hard to find. Cinderella, Citizen King, Eric Clapton, uh... These, these were never issued as 45 CD singles or 12-inch singles. You could, the only way you could get them was, was directly from the label, one of my favorite rock groups of today, Coldplay. And we've had literally thousands of promo CD singles. Uh, the only way we, you get them is from the labels themselves. In this area, we have the Hot 100 singles that were issued as uh, commercial CDs as commercial CDs. You have Jewel got to number 36 in 2002. Uh, Elton John and Leanne Rimes. Here we have uh, Janelle got to 62 in 2001. Here we have Danelle Jones. But this is every single that was issued commercially that made the Hot 100 is in here. And again, a lot of them that only got to position 80 to 100 are extremely hard to find. Cher had some great songs. She was one of my favorite singers. Some great covers. Aren't those great? Look at these. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. In this area, we've got over 15,000 country singles. This is the complete history of the Billboard country singles charts from 1950 through the 90s actually. Gosh. Every country single that charted is in here. 
Here we have about 10 to 12,000 R&B singles, everything that made the R&B charts. All the early Ray Charles on Yellow Atlantic, I Got a Woman, extremely rare. A Fool for You, all the original R&B singles that made the, the Billboard. They call them the race records, they call them the Harlem Hit Parade, the R&B soul singles, all here. Here we have all the uh, EPs that charted. Uh, from the 50s and early 60s. These are all the 45s that made the early Billboard pop charts from 1949 to about 1954. The complete history of the adult contemporary charts, singles that made the adult charts that did not make the Hot 100. Here we have everything that made the Billboard pop charts. This was the very beginning of their first bestseller chart. Uh, 1940, Bing Crosby, Count Basie, uh, Vic Damone, the Dorsey Brothers, Benny Goodman, uh, Sammy Kay, all the big bands, the swing bands, the sweet bands, all the great vocalists are in here. The R&B singles that made the uh, the uh, race records charts in the in the early uh, mid to uh, early to mid 40s. All the uh, early country singles like Roy Acuff. Uh, Bill Monroe and that type of thing is all here and then we have a lot of great non-charted valuable 78s here. And that's it over 120,000 records in the archive. Hooray. Well that's it Jim that's the archive that's my vault. What did you think? It's breathtaking. It's, it's, it's got to be the greatest record collection in the world. Well, people have told me that, and uh, I think it is. And uh, next time you come, I've got another vault room to show you. Oh, no, another room? <laughs> another room. This is Jim Steele. After my grand tour of the Joel Whitburn Archive, Joel and I sat down and talked. And with us today is Joel Whitburn. Joel, how did all this get started? Well, I began collecting 78s when I was 10 years old. My mother would go to, a, to the dime store shopping and there'd be a little table of 78s and I'd go through 10 cents a piece, pick out uh, records by Frankie Lane, Dinah Shore, Johnny Ray. In fact, I think the first record I ever bought on my own that I actually played at home was Cry by Johnny Ray. I played it so many times I memorized the record. I used to go around the house and I'd sing it to my sisters and get on my knees and I just love the record. So it's, I've just had a passion for collecting records my whole life since I was 10 years old and it continues today. And uh, I started with that very first Hot 100 chart, Ricky Nelson, Poor Little Fool was number one. I had I bought a bunch of little 3 by 5 index cards, put Ricky Nelson on there and put the, the date it charted, put the title, the label number, and then I followed it through his chart history. It started at number 48, went to 15, and eventually went to number one. Then I kept track of the total weeks it charted. Started that in 1965. And uh, five years later, in 1970, I um, published my first book based on all these cards I had assembled, which I thought might be valuable to somebody. I thought I was the only guy in the world that was interested in chart positions. I, thought, I, I really thought I was. I thought, who else really cares if... Chantilly Lace got to number six or number one or number 20, you know. And uh, I was glad to find out there were literally thousands and thousands of people around the world that were interested in this chart information. Had you, had you already been in contact with the Billboard at that, no. at that point? No, I contacted Billboard to see what they had, and all they had was a, a top 1,000 listing, which was on mimeograph sheets loaded with spelling mistakes for the titles and artist names. And I didn't like that. And they, they charged $50 for a little stack of mimeograph pages. So I decided to publish my research. I said, I'm going to put together a little book, you know, a little booklet, stay, get a staple stitched and print up 3,000 copies and uh, get a little ad and billboard. I took a little 152nd page ad. Cost me, I don't know, I think back then it was like $50 or something, which was uh, about all I could afford. And put in there the history of the Hot 100. And the order started coming in. I, I you know, they were selling for $50 a piece. And uh, Billboard called me 
It was as like I think in late 1970. He said, uh, "How dare you use Hot 100 in our? What is this? What is this you're selling? You can't use the name Hot 100." It was Hal Cook, the publisher, and their main office was in Los Angeles. And I, so I said, he said, what is it? I said, I can send you a copy of the book. And then he said, okay, do that, and then I'll get back to you. He got the book, and he called me back, and he loved the book. He said, you know, Joel, we tried doing this, our own staff, and it fell through the cracks because there were a lot of mistakes in the charts, and I went through and corrected all those mistakes, especially when they had the top 100 in 1955 to 58. They would show Ricky Nelson doing a Fat Domino song or something, vice versa, and they had, they had things wrong that I corrected. He said, why don't you and your wife come out here and let's work out a license agreement? Because they were, at the time, talking to Casey Kasem about doing the, the uh, radio programming of their charts. So Casey went out there and I went out there. We all met with Hal Cook. He picked me up in his Mercedes, took me to the Let Us State, the Beverly Hills, out there at Hilton. And uh, we had a great time. Hal Cook was just a great guy. And he was the, the publisher. And we worked out a license agreement where I would pay them a royalty they gave me the exclusive rights. They would let me, uh, give me house rate on advertising. And it turned out to be a 26-page contract that I signed at the same time Casey signed his contract. We shook hands, and uh, we've been friends ever since. How was the collection put together? They published these top 1,000 lists. There were a lot of mistakes, and I was determined to get the titles right, the subtitles right, the artist names right, and the labels and the numbers and the, the songwriters, all that information I wanted. So I knew I had to have the records. And I had a great collection. Uh, by 1965, by 1970, it was, it was growing pretty fast. When I uh, had finally put all the research together, I realized I didn't have, there was a lot of stuff I was missing. You'd look at the discography of Fat Stomino, for instance. I'd have maybe 75%, but I was missing certain singles that didn't do very well or that I missed for some reason. I said, I've got to get those. I've got to complete this. So I, I went after everything in the top 40, and I completed that. Then I went after everything in the top 60, completed that. And I said, I'm going for everything in this book, everything. So we set out. I was, I was on a mission, and I would run ads in Goldmine Magazine, I would, you know, at every, any place I could. Uh, the list was like 1,000, then it got down to 500, to 400, to 100, and finally down to, you know, the, the final 10. Uh, and uh, that was that was quite a quite a journey. Do you remember the last single that you needed to complete your collection of the top 100 hits since 1940? It was it was by a group called the Capris. They did a song called "There's a Moon Out Tonight," which was a big hit. It was on the Old Town label, but they also did a song called "Girl in My Dreams," which got which got to position 95 for one week, and that was the last record I didn't have that that ever made the the Billboard. Hot 100 charts, and I had been running some ads, and it got down, I think, to the top five or something. Four of them came in. I was still missing that one. A girl in New York wrote me that she had Girl in My Dreams, and I thought, you know, wow, it can't be. You know, she won, I think, I don't know, $18 or something. Sent her the check, and the, and the package came one day, a little, little brown package, and we knew what it was, and so we all gathered around the whole staff, we're all excited. I got my knife out. We opened it up, and there it was, Girl in My Dreams. We just all, oh, wow, you know, the last piece of the puzzle.